The Celtics, they have been having it rough on this trip out west. And let's get into Forsberg's four. Hopefully some positives in there. Yeah. Two straight losses, but something tells me it's not going to be good. I'm not a magician, Amina. <laughs> what I am going to try to do is try, let's say, so, okay, the Celtics are 8-8 eight and eight since December 2nd. Haven't been great, like riding the roller coaster a little bit. But I'm going to try and drill up five ways, four ways, because that's Forsberg four. Yeah. Two. Find the, the get them back on track. Okay. Get them back to playing the way they Positive. were over the first 25 games of the season, which was a lot more enjoyable to watch. Definitely. And we start with the first number is 10.9%. And that is the dip in the Celtics' three-point percentage by Boston bench players in, in, over the last 12 games. And why it's concerning? Because, well, I mean, the bench was on fire at the start of the year. Felt like these guys couldn't miss, whether it was Malcolm Brogdon, Sam Howes, or Grant Williams. Everybody was great. And they've all kind of turned into pumpkins at the same time. Unfortunately, doesn't mean they can't find it. But, all right, listen to this. Malcolm Brogdon went from 49.4 to 28.9, a, drip, a, a, a drop of 20.5%. Derek White, 42.7 to 22.2. Another drop of 20.5. Sam Hauser, 45.5 to 28.9 the last 12, minus 16.6%. Grant Williams, 46.7%, down to 36.6%. I could sit here and read all the numbers. We'd have to put an NC-17 rating on this program because they're so hard to watch. And I can't explain why they've all forgotten how to shoot at the same time. But here's the thing. We know they can do it. They just got to shoot with more confidence. They've all got to figure out like, how to get through this slump. And if they get back even close to where they were shooting in the first half of the season, I feel better about it. But they need more contributions from the bench in general. They just haven't been as efficient as we saw at the start of the year. I think what hurts me the most is whenever I see Sam Hauser getting ready to put up that three – and it doesn't go in because I'm expecting it now yeah. at this point of the season. I'm like, oh, my gosh, it always goes in. And now it's not happening. I'm a little heartbroken, Chris Forsberg. He got that. his first one last night, and I was like, here we go. Here we go. Right, Sammy, right. got it. And then he missed a bunch. So, you know, <laughs> they're going to work through it. You win some, you lose some. All right, what's coming in number three? All right, so the second number is 99.9. .9, and that is Boston's defensive rating in the 761 minutes last season that Rob Williams and Al Horford played together. Here's why it matters. You can see where I'm trending here. I've been beating a little bit of a dead horse here. Mm -hmm. I do think eventually, and I'm not even saying it's got to be right now, but I do think the, based on the way the Celtics have played and their lack of energy at the start of games, I would like to see them get back to this lineup. One, because Rob is an energy giver, right. and as soon as he gets out there, good things happen. And two, I just feel like the Boston's best defensive lineup is going to be this group. And mm -hmm. last year we saw it. This group was a juggernaut both on both sides of the ball, especially in the second half of the year. But part of the reason the Celtics led the NBA in defensive rating was because Rob and Al held down that back line. So I'd like to see them get to it. I get it. Like, right now, you want to stagger those minutes a little bit. Rob's not playing every night. There's some back-to-backs coming up where they're not, both not going to be able to play. So maybe it's easier to keep Derek White in that starting lineup. But I just think eventually they got to get to it. And I think that will help them sort of figure out some of their woes right now. And, again, Joe's sticking to his guns. I get it. But give me more Rob. I guess yeah. that's the bottom line. I, and, and when it all is. else fails, more Rob. More Rob out there on the court. And I know that they want to be cautious with Rob bringing him back into that regular season mm -hmm. flow. But just like Perk said, I believe it was earlier this week, put him back in the starting lineup. At this point, it's like they need that energy and they want to continue to push for the postseason. And, and that's my biggest thing is just energy. Like, as soon mm -hmm. as he's out there, like, everyone's like, here we go, here we go. And what have they been lacking the last few games? Energy, energy. and effort mm -hmm. keeps coming up in these postgame press conferences. All right, what's coming up next? All right, number three, 41.5%. And that's what Jason Tatum shot on three-pointers after the All-Star break last season. That's only 20 games. But it showed that throughout there was an evolution of his, of his three-point shooting. Started the year really cold, kind of figured it out. And part of the reason the Celtics went on a huge second half half tear. Part of the reason that Jason Tatum finished sixth in the MVP voting was that he was so good and so lethal with that shot after the All-Star break. Well, this year I'm, I'm asking to, to accelerate the process. Mm. We're almost at 41 games. Tatum is a second half killer. I need him to find that three-point shot. It's really crazy that he's shooting a career low 34.8% through his 36 uh, appearances this season. He needs that swagger back. And let me tell you, he's got a big matchup tomorrow night against Luka. Oh, I know we're going to talk yeah. a whole bunch about this, but like, if there's a perfect moment for him to find that form, and we started, we talked about the bench guys not shooting good threes, but it's, it starts at the top. And so if Jason Tatum can find that, get anywhere close to that number, I can't even imagine. He's already averaging over 30 points per game. What happens if he finds that shot, and how good can he be 
it'll help that MVP cause. I feel like it might just be like this getting towards the midseason kind of mm -hmm. lull and slump for some guys. But hopefully Jason Tatum does find that. Whatever he had at the beginning of the season, he finds it right now. Last but not least, what do we got? Last we got 49.3. And that's the number of shots the Celtics are contesting per game this season. They're actually seventh in the NBA. It's not like criminally low. But I went back and looked at last year's number, and it was all the way up at 55. It was actually the second best last season. So a six-shot difference doesn't sound like a huge drop-off. But then you look at it, and mostly it's two-point shots. Well, who out there helps contest two-point shots and at the rim? Rob Williams. So I think there's a correlation here. The Celtics haven't been as crisp defensively. They haven't been getting and just being like in people's airspace, sort of making them uncomfortable. Well, Rob makes a lot of people uncomfortable when he's out there. Not me, because I get really comfortable when he's out there. <laughs> so I am eager. I think that number will elevate now that Rob is working his way back. But I think just in general, if you go through the NBA's hustle database, whether it's like getting loose balls, whether it's taking charges, whether it's getting on the floor, and, and, and like, they just haven't done it to the same level that we saw last season. I just want to see them get back to being gritty. And for me, that comes down to their identity. What are you going to be? Are you going to be a defensive-minded team or are you going to be like a finesse offense? And I hope that with Rob coming back and more and more that they get back to being a defensive-minded team. It sounds like everything, like the answer to everything is just <laughs> Rob Williams. I don't know if it's just because it's you, Chris Forsberg, but it sounds like <laughs> the answer to all the Celtics' problems right now is just a time lord. If you just separate even my biases, <laughs> I think it's clear. Like Rob is the answer to all that ails them. Oh, my gosh.